A very good morning to you. We're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning right here from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. And we have a very interesting uh, setup, a lineup of discussions for you this morning. Of course, uh, the president of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Ayuba Uwaba, has said that the Nigerian Workers' Union will embark on a three-day nationwide strike if the federal government fails to accede to the demands of the academic staff union of universities after the ongoing two-day warning protest organized by the NLC. We'll look at that as uh, we go on with our discussions. So two days of protest by the Nigerian Labour Congress holding nationwide with the federal, over the federal government's handling of months-long strike by the university lecturers also on the breakfast this morning. Nigeria's National Industrial Court has ordered the immediate upward review of the salaries of judges, but some lawyers think it's not a good idea. We seek to find out why and also the implications of the court's decision. We also have in-depth analysis on the off the headlines on the front pages of today's national dailies. We look at all this and more ahead on the breakfast this morning. All right, very good morning to you, and we're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday morning reaching from our studios right here in Victoria Island, Lagos. And of course, we have all these wonderful discussions lined up for you right here on the program. My name is Kofi Batels. As usual, we start with our trending segment to look at stories making uh, the rounds in the country and around the world. Let's start off with um, the governor of Kaduna State, Nasil Erofai, uh, declaring a three-day public holiday uh, for voters' registration. That, of course, is uh, coming on the heels of the announcement by the Independent National Electoral Commission, who have said that uh, the continuous voter registration exercise for the permanent voter card uh, will end on the 31st of July 2022. And uh, the governor of Kaduna State has followed on the heels of um, his uh, fellow governors. You look at the governor of Lagos State, who's also uh, declared um, a four-day public holiday for voter registration exercise, talking about uh, Babajide Songwolu. Um, and of course, that one coming uh, also to help the Goshens go out and get registered to vote. Um, what's been happening in, in Kaduna State has been uh, reports of insecurity, reports of uh, bandits attacks, reports of terrorism activities in that state. It's not been an easy ride for the residents of Kaduna State. And uh, one can understand why the governor would say that, uh, you know what, it's time for all of you just take some time off and take advantage of the, uh, the voter registration exercise that is ongoing by INEC. The Independent National Electoral Commission has also been able to release weekly statistics as far as uh, the voter uh, uh, registration exercise is concerned to let us know how many people are getting registered in each local government area of each state across the country. And I'm sure uh, Governor El Rufai feels that Kaduna State can do better um, as far as the registration is concerned. So, for the next three days, uh, the residents of Kaduna State will be allowed, especially public workers, to go get registered. You don't have to go to work. They don't have to report to the, the banks. They don't have to go to the government uh, offices. They don't have to answer to anybody. All they have to do is to get registered. I just hope that some people uh, will not be finding their way to their villages because of this. The Nigerian elections have experienced uh, an increasingly um, higher number of registered voters over the years. From 1999, you had a certain number of voters to 2003, to 2007, to 2011, uh, to 2015, 2022. It's been an increasing progression of number of registered voters. But what the figures from the 2022 elections and previous elections show is that the number of those who have turned out to vote the number of those who, have, who are registered on the voters' register who turn out to vote uh, in proportion or as a percentage of those who are registered has continually declined in recent elections. So voter apathy is a big issue. And of course, um, a lot of uh, organizations, uh, civil society organizations in particular, those who work in the pro-democracy space have highlighted 
this voter apathy as one of the reasons why elections don't often produce the results expected. So the drive to ensure enough people, as many as possible, eligible to vote next year register uh, is on, you know, from the private sector, civil society organizations, and the government. It remains to be seen if people will turn out to vote. Uh, voter apathy is driven by a lot of factors. Some of the factors include the fact that they don't believe the election is free and fair. Some also uh, pointed out to electoral violence as a reason for not wanting to leave their houses, you know, to go vote. Uh, so it remains to be seen if this will be a different election. Um, the 2023 elections are very important for Nigeria, and many believe, many believe that we're having a, an increased voter turnout as far as uh, this election is concerned. So I'd like to see other state governments also do the same thing, uh, declare public holidays and ensure that... Uh, their residents and those who are the citizens uh, go out to get registered to vote. Also, we'd like to see the private sector jump in on this as well to ensure that um, they give their staff off days. They give their staff off days. The difference between what is being declared in Lagos State uh, and, and uh, Kaduna State is that uh, the Kaduna State government is saying it's a public holiday, while the Lagos State government is saying these are work-free days. And it remains to be seen if the private sector in Lagos State will jump on this as well. Let's move on to Kogi State, where there were reports of um, a government office in uh, Kogi State in north central Nigeria re reportedly being shaken by an explosion, a loud explosion which was heard uh, in the premises housing the office of the secretary uh, to the Kogi State government. He is Dr. Folashade Arike Ayoade. Um, indeed, it was some confusion, especially on social media. As uh, you know, some people rejected or denied uh, this these reports. Some came out to say it wasn't true. Indeed, of course, uh, the government put out a statement. Uh, but we told the offices next to uh, Lugard Street, next to Lugard Street, housing the Kogi State Council of the Nigerian Union of Journalists. So this is the office of the secretary to the Kogi State government. Some reports were saying that the Kogi State government house uh, had been. Um, had been attacked, you know, and there was an ex had been bombed. Uh, but this is not the case, as this happens to be the uh, premises of the secretary to the Kogi State government, Dr. Folashade Arike Ayoade, uh, the premises housing the office of the secretary to the government. But of course, the secretary to the government of any state is um, a very important office and one that is not uh, to be toyed with. Uh, the loud explosion was heard at around 8.30 a.m. on Tuesday as journalists gathered to uh, prepare for the day's assignments. You know, of course, such, uh, such an occurrence which is so close to the Secretariat of the Nigerian of Journalists cannot go uncovered. Now, when contacted the State Police Commissioner, uh, Edward Igbuka confirmed the explosion. Uh, he said what happened was that uh, they were informed of a package that looked like a bomb that was left on the premises. And uh, the police commissioner said he immediately deployed uh, the bomb disposal unit there to assess the object. Uh, he says the object was immediately uh, detonated. Uh, the explosion you heard, he said, was the handwork, I'm using his words now, was the handwork of a bomb disposal unit uh, brought about by the efforts to blow up the object. That's what he says. Uh, and an investigation, we're told, has already commenced to ascertain uh, what the object was. Uh, I think one lesson that I've learned from this is uh, we need to be careful what kind of uh, stories we, uh, you know, we, we follow on social media, uh, especially from the news sites, because uh, it was seen that um, some of the newspaper, news websites rather, you know, said there was a, a bomb explosion at the Kogi State Government House. And uh, you know, people started saying, oh, the terrorists have come again. Uh, oh, it's happening again, Boko Haram and all that. You know, but uh, this is clear. It was, a, 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 let's say, a safe detonation of, um, of a parcel uh, or an object, or an item that was found there. However, however, it's not um, something that people can, should, should not, you know, uh, complain about or take another look at because we need to find out from the investigation what exactly led to that? What was that parcel about? Was it an improvised explosive device? Was it, um, uh, you know, a letter bomb? Or, you know, was it uh, 
something that wasn't meant to be exploded or I don't know. So we need to know what happened. Who, who put it there? Why was it taken there? Et cetera, et cetera. We had a couple of days ago that some repentant bandits, you know, who were scavenging for scrap metal, uh, picked up an improvised explosive device, you know, they thought was uh, uh, scrap metal. And what happened was that it, it blew up and some of them died. So we need to know what, what exactly uh, was detonated. I think the word uh, that should have been used by um, uh, the police commissioner was detonation. Probably when people hear the word blow up, uh, they might not understand what's going on. Let's move on to our next uh, trending story. The president of Nigeria, Mohamed Buhari, has requested uh, the Nigerian Senate to confirm 19 INA commissioners. He wrote a letter to the Senate on the 25th of July, and the Senate president read it yesterday, Tuesday, at plenary. Um, that letter was not just about the 19 INA commissioners. Uh, the letter was also about the acting chief justice of Nigeria, uh, whom the president would like to see confirmed by the Nigerian Senate as a substantive chief justice uh, of Nigeria. This follows the uh, retirement of the former justice uh, or chief justice of the federation. Um, so this is what the president wrote as a letter, a containing letter he wrote to the uh, Senate president. And the letter read in part, quote, Pursuant to Section 23 Sub 1 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, I forward for confirmation by the Senate the appointment of Honorable Justice Olukayade Ariwola as the Chief Justice of Nigeria. While I hope that the submission will be considered in the usual expeditious manner, uh, please accept, distinguished Senate President, the assurances of my highest regard. All right, so that's uh, what the, um, the president wrote uh, in that letter. In another letter to the Senate, Buhari also requested the upper chamber to uh, confirm the nomination of Dr. Uh, Suleiman Aga Afiko as a commissioner representing the Southeast Zone of the National Hajj Commission. Uh, he also wrote to the Senate to confirm 19 nominees as resident electoral commissioners for the Independent National Electoral Commission. Uh, this also, of course, is in accordance with the provisions of Section 154 Sub 1. Section 154 Sub 1 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. Uh, it was explained that the nomination of five resident electoral commissioners are for renewal, while 14 out of the 19 are fresh appointments. All right, so it seems that uh, some of the resident electoral commissioners, 14 of them, will not be returning, will not be returning. And it's interesting at this time because um, there's been a sort of a debate. Uh, Fessus Okoye, who is usually on this program, who is a national commissioner of information and public or voter education, um, has been defending the moves by the Nigerian, uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission, uh, where they've sent um, supervising or supervisory uh, national uh, commissioners to the states around the country, um, and they've been making statements and all that. Uh, some have tried to read into it. Indeed, there was an article in the Vanguard a couple of days ago. Some have tried to read into it to say that uh, maybe uh, some of these visits by the supervising national commissioners in INEC uh, meant to, you know, to put a spanner in the wheel of what's been uh, some, some very, very interesting decisions by the resident electoral commissioners. For instance, Mike Egini, uh, who is a, a resident electoral commissioner in Aquabum State, Mike Egini has been there uh, for some time. Uh, himself and some other resident electoral commissioners have you know, sent in reports you know, of, uh, the, um, uh, of the supervision and observation of these, uh, the party primaries. And you have the likes of... Um, uh, former governor of Aquaibom State, uh, Gotsu Lakpabio. You have the likes of the current Senate president who read this letter, um, not being able to return uh, to the Senate because they were not part of original primaries held by their political parties. You have the likes of David Umahi, governor of um, Eboni State, who is also having some issues. Even Governor Ben Ayade of Cross River State was part of the APC presidential um, uh, contest and later popped up as a Senate <laughs> nominee of his party. So some of the resident electoral commissioners have been giving these, uh, these officials, these gentlemen, these individuals, a tough time and a tough ride in, in, in their states. Well, uh, the, the INEC official, Fessel Koye, had to say that the resident electoral commissioners are not members of INEC. 
that is the commission, and he based this on the Nigerian constitution. So he says there's nothing going on between them. But this is statutory. The 19 of them have their tenants expired. That's what we told. Four of them, uh, or five of them, are returning. 14 are not returning. The nominees include um, those for Adamawa State, uh, Cross River State, um, Taraba State, Ogo State, Kogi State. Emo State, Sokoto State, Oyo State, Katsina State, Ebony State, Beno State, Delta State, Kaduna State, Kano State, Enugu State, the FCT, Bauchi, Anambra, and Yubi. Now, these are not the states they are, rep they are represented or where they work. Well, these are the states that nominated them uh, on account of federal character. So, for instance, Oboe Fanga, who is from Cross River State, is a Cross Riverian, but he is a resident electoral commissioner uh, of, um, of River State. So it remains to be seen if the likes of uh, Mikey Guinea are uh, still going to be there uh, or not. Uh, we'll, we'll have time to discuss this uh, later on the program. That's it for the trending segment on The Breakfast. Uh, we'll take a look at what the papers are saying today when we come back from a short break. Please stay with us. <music>